As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words heal a heart that hurts. I want to spend. Shelly Quinn and my co-host is Francine Bergman, better known as Aunt Francine. Oh, Aunt Francine from the 3 ABN Kids Network. But this is not a kids program. Let me tell you, we are so excited that you are joining us for this interview today. We have two youth with us, and they are inspiring. I think by the end of this program. God is going to lay a challenge on your heart. Remember in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah is pressing into the presence of the Lord. And as he sees the Lord high and lifted up, he hears the call of the Lord saying, who will we send for us? And Isaiah says, oh, here I am. Here I am, send me. Well, that is exactly the experience of our beautiful guests today. And let me go ahead and introduce them. Oceana Muncy, and you are the founder and director of Here I Am, Send Me Ministries. Welcome. Thank you. Oh. Glad to be here. Oh. You know, at 3ABM, we're always saying that we wear so many hats. Well, the one hat I haven't put on on camera was the cowboy hat, but we're going to explain that. I should say cowgirl hat. Exactly. <laughs> we'll explain that in a moment. And then we have Kai Brandenburg. Yeah. And Kai, we're glad to have you here. Thank you. And, and you're both 16 years old. Yes. yes. And you are from Montana. Yes. I'm you here. are a cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> and you're from Washington. You live on 40 acres of forest land, right? Yes. Oh, well, we're so happy that you're here. We're going to get to know these two much better in just a moment and see, you know, the question that we're asking today is, can God really use youth to make a difference in this world for his kingdom? And you're going to see the answer is yes. But first, we always like to start with music. What's our music today? Well, it's by Stephanie Don and John Loma Cain, our pastor, and it's called, In Times Like These, We Need Our Savior. Amen. Oh, 
to hear them singing together. They blend so beautifully. And we're so, uh, Stephanie Dawn is a special person. She's been with 3BN for years. I think even as a child. Even as a yeah, child. Yeah, I've seen little pictures and videos of her. <laughs> On kids' time, that's yeah. wonderful. Well, if you are just joining us a few minutes late, our special guests are Oceana Muncy, and then we have Kai Brandenburg, and. They're 16 years old, both of them, and they're very active in ministry for the Lord. This is exciting. But before we talk about your ministry, which is here I am, send me, tell us a little bit, Oceana, about your childhood, where you grew up. Just give us a little, who's Oceana? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. So I grew up and was born across the world in Taiwan. My family and I were missionaries there. So a lot of, I'm, I'm half Chinese and half Caucasian. So a lot of my relatives were there. But I grew up in the mission field with my family. My father was a third grade teacher there. My mom helped with the church and they met there. But through my childhood, I always loved God. I loved people and I loved animals. And so I, I got the people and friends there, but I didn't get the animals. <laughs> so my family were, were going to retire from the mission field after 18 years and mine uh, 10 years. So when I was 11, I moved to the States here. And now I live on a little farm with my family, my goat, my horse, my chickens and dogs. They're all, they're all my siblings who make up for being the only child. Amen, <laughs> amen. So you're a Montana gal. Her horse is named Breeze and I love your goat's name, Cyrus. Yes. <laughs> Does a chicken have a name? They, they're ladies, just ladies. Just the ladies. <laughs> well, anyway, but it's wonderful that you grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist Christian home. Yes. And obviously it did take, and we're going to see in just a moment. You know, I told Oceana when I first met her, it's interesting how often a time out 
is what it takes for God to get our attention. We're going to see what her time out was and how God got her attention. <laughs> but first, there's Kai. Now, Kai, tell us about you. As you said, my name is Kai, and unlike Oceana, I don't have a lot of animals. I have a lot of siblings, though. <laughs> I am the second old oldest of six siblings or children. And how many boys, how many girls? Uh, three boys and three girls. Three boys and three That's girls. Balanced. <laughs> I live on 40 acres of just forest up in Washington and I love to bake. You love to bake. Now, this is interesting to me. You all have been working in ministry together for at least a year. Yes. But when did you meet? Yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> you met yesterday. Yeah. So, so this has been what you would call a Zoom friendship. Yes. Uh, it's been an online because you both attend a Christian school, Seventh-day Adventist school. That's an online school. What's the name of your school? Remnant. Remnant. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're just so excited yeah, that so, you're here. So how many years have you been part of Remnant? Um, I think we both started a remnant preparatory school when we were just freshmen. Uh -huh. okay. yes. Wow. So you've got to tell us, what is Here Am I, Send Me so Ministries? Here I Am, Send Me is a ministry where us as Adventist youth, we come together once a week and we talk together. We talk, we're like, how can we share Jesus to the youth of today? Because mm -hmm. today's youth is usually like, where we can reach them, where we can reach ourselves, we realized was like Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, the social media platforms. So we, what we do is we write our own scripts and the scripts are biblically based. We add Bible verses to support what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. For example, like what is faith? Does God really forgive you when you sin? Like, are you worth something to God? Mm -hmm. Things like that. And they're really short clips because usually people um, our age scroll on the internet. And our goal is that when we write our scripts, we film ourselves with our camera outside as our studio. And we hope that at least one of these videos will reach one person. If it does, we're happy. Amen. Amen. Now, let's let's talk about your time out. How did Here I Am Send Me Ministries get started? Well, that's kind of an embarrassing story. But since you asked, a lot of people tell these stories when, you know, when I become a senior someday and nobody cares about my time out story. But this story actually inspires me because how God used a timeout to make something good. Amen. So I honestly don't remember why I was grounded, but I was probably grounded from arguing with my mother or something. But when I was grounded, I couldn't use my phone. And it was Sabbath and it was raining. And like I said, I love my animals. So they were all ducked away in their shed somewhere. Like, don't play with me right now. It's getting away from the rain. So I was like on the couch with my dad. I'm like, Dad, oh, please, please let me use my phone. I, I want to do something right now. And I gave him grief. And my dad's like, OK, Oceana, I'll give you an ultimatum here. You can either not use your phone at all, or you can use your phone for a project for God. And so I was like, OK, I jumped on this opportunity. I can use my phone. And so I, I used my phone. For, I was like, what can I do? So I decided to make a video, and I never really made videos before. So this was the time I made my first studio. And my first studio was in my living room with couch pillows stacked as high as you could get <laughs> with a phone on top to, to be like a tripod. And then I was like, how do I get a professional looking background? Mm. So I took bed sheets and I strung them on the window. Nothing more professional than bed sheets. No, <laughs> nothing more professional. So that was my first <laughs> studio and how it started. But then my parents encouraged me, Oceana, maybe you should start posting these videos. Mm. So I posted them and some, I, I got the like little thumbs up and amens. Like this encouraged me. Thank you for sharing. And even those small things as a youth, it encouraged me. So I kept making them till today. And now we have a team and Kai joined me. Oh, Kai, why did you decide to participate in support Oceana? Yeah. So it was my sophomore year uh -huh. and 
things happened at the beginning of the year, so which led me to have like this downfall kind of. And was it because of COVID or uh, no, it was even before that or? School, work and stuff. School. And so, which led me to have like this downfall kind of in my spiritual life. Mm. So <clears throat> I started questioning God. I was like, God, what's my purpose in life? I have all this new information because I started attending this new school and they really emphasize the um, importance of knowing God and how to connect um, scriptures with scriptures. And so I was just praying. I was like, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to minister to others? Mm. And so <clears throat> around this time, Oceana started to be, uh, no, to post videos and so God impressed me to start reposting them and sharing them with my friends so and then I kept praying because I felt like that wasn't totally enough to serve him so, and um, a few weeks later Oceana called me and she's like hey would you like to join me and so I gladly accepted and oh, wow. yeah. So basically I, you've grown from you did this right. to now you have a team of seven right. soon to be seven and each person there are many different locations. They're each doing a video, but tell us how you, I mean, you, they each produce their videos and then you upload it, but there's, it, there is a team effort in this year. How do you choose your topics? Like if, if you don't just call Kai up and say, hey, let's talk about uh, faith or tithe or whatever. How do you all choose your topics? So exactly, we, I thought about doing that. In, in the beginning, I was like, how do we, coordinate together because we're spread out across the globe like one member's in Canada another's in Bahama some are in Montana Washington Chicago and so I was like well one big thing that helped me start these videos and the passion to start them was what I had learned like Kai had said so in my devotions when I read the Bible by myself and prayed God would impress things on my heart like, wow, I didn't know that before. Maybe other people don't know this either. Oh, well, that's good. And so we ask each member, like, pray about it, think about it, and give back to me. What is something that you feel that God wants you to share, and where do you have proof in the Bible about what you're talking about? Oh, that's good. So what's a topic that maybe you've done? You, it, and if I understand you, you're saying that in your daily devotions, as the Word of God, as the Holy Spirit enlightens your mind and impresses you, that you're going to then share it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, tell, have you, what topic have you done? Um, probably one of my favorite topics is God does not call the qualified, He qualifies the um, called. Amen. And which is really important because often we think, oh, I'm not qualified enough to do that. But really, it's the other way around. If we answer His call, He will qualify us. Amen. He just wants that willing heart, right? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you know what I love about this is that we learn from the Bible to teach, to share, and we teach to learn. It's interesting how God will show us something in the Bible. And if you go out and start sharing it or teaching mm -hmm. others about that, right. it really gets deep. But sometimes God shows us something and we're going, oh, wow, that's so good. And if we don't go share it, then six months later, you're going through the Bible again, go, oh, I forgot about that, Lord. <laughs> so there really is, it's something that it deepens your own experience. I, I really like how they're using technology because all these young people really like technology. And I think they're using it for good, just like your father was encouraging you and you wanted that technology <laughs> and yet you put it for good. And how many more other people would love to do something like that because it's a tool. It shouldn't be the, the, I mean, we all, whenever we don't know what to do, like even in a conversation or you're waiting for somebody, everybody pulls out their phone or does something. So might as well use it for something good. But you know, there's something else that I really like and I can identify and I think I, you, you touched on it a little bit. I used to be, as a, as a child, I would go in my closet and I would read or spend some time in the Bible and reading, but I think you have something. Uh, I had a little walk-in closet, but I, I, I just love your story. Will you tell us a little bit about your closet experience? I would love to, because that was a pivotal point in mm -hmm. my spiritual life. Like I said, I grew up in the mission field and in the mission field, in, in our family home, actually, 
morning and evening, we would have family worships. Like we'd sing songs together, mom bring out her guitar, my cousins would pile around and, and oh, play their ukuleles. And so it was a time of family bonding, but also bonding with God. And my parents always encouraged me, Oceana, even though you have this time to bond with God through the family, you should have that private time with God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not enough to just have the morning and evening time with Him. And so I, I was like, mm, and I was inconsistent doing it. But when I started going to the school I am now, and I started listening to the lectures, especially history class and, and Bible class, I realized that God was big because I started hearing about how bi the Bible is directly connected with the rise and fall of nations throughout history. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that's my God? Like, wow, he's really big, actually. I, I didn't, like, I minimized him. And so I was like, okay, I really actually want to get to know this God. Like, does he really know me? And, and I wanted to dig deep in the scripture more than just reading what is said to dig deep, connect verses. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, where can I do this? A private time with God. And I didn't have a place, so I made a place. And just like the Bible verse says, go into your closet, the secret place with God. Mm. So I was like, I have a closet. <laughs> so I went in my closet and, you know, some girls, this might be hard for them, but I totally encourage it. I took my clothes. I took one whole side of my walk-in closet. I sorted, gave away my clothes. I took all my shoes out of my closet wow. and that was my prayer closet and to be really honest I went in there the first day and I had nothing to say to God I was like I knelt down I said God I really don't know what to say to you right now like I opened my Bible I didn't know where to read and that's like that's the truth because sometimes we have to be honest with each other to Absolutely. encourage each other Absolutely. And so when I went into my closet, I did it morning after morning. And I did it first thing in the morning because my school started at 7.15. And so I was like, all right. So I kept going in and little by little, what I noticed was I started staying a little longer each time. And when I totally surrendered to God, I told him, God, my relationship I feel now to you it almost feels like plastic. I, I don't know how to describe it, Lord, but you know my heart mm -hmm. and I really do want to know you like on a friend basis. Like I love you, but I don't know how. And through that, even till now, when I go in there, it's my safe place. It's mm -hmm. a security because I can tell God everything that I would never tell another human being. And I know he will not turn me away. Amen. And you know, that's Pressing into his presence is what I call that. When, and, and we've just all got to learn that prayer is, you know, I always say communi communication is the relationship. I mean, a good relationship takes communication, but it turns out that the more you talk with someone and get to know them, the closer, the more intimate yes. they become. And that's what happened with Isaiah. You know, when he was pressing into the presence of the Lord, you have recognized, as I say, he recognized the call of God. He received the call of God, but you're responding to the call of God and he's drawing you in to a more intimate relationship. And I have to tell you all, at 16 years old, you have no idea how blessed you are. It, I was nearly I thought I was a Christian all my life, but I was nearly 50 when I really had that kind of experience, wow. you know, and that's when God called me to full-time ministry. But what we'd like to do, you won't believe this, you are seven members, one's 12, right? Yes. 12 <laughs> years old, and the oldest is? 17. 17. So we've got members of the Here I Am and, and, and I always want to say, here am I, because that's what the scripture says, but here I am, send me ministry. They've got 17 members from 12 to 17, seven, seven, yep. <laughs> 17, 17 members <laughs> from 12 to 17. And we want to show you the videos because we're going to make a call. There's more youth out there mm -hmm. who may be very interested in saying, 
Lord, I can do this. And maybe some of us old fogies that are just sitting around <laughs> will get some ideas too. But let's look at some of their videos. We all serve a God, whether we know it or not. I serve the God who made heaven and earth and all that dwells therein. I serve him because he has done so much for you and me. He's the life giver, the reason why we're all alive today. His grace and mercy is everlasting. Serving God brings us joy, peace, and happiness. But that is only if we're obedient to him. He has given us simple rules for us to follow. And if we do them, then he will bless us abundantly. God loves us so much, even though, sadly, we're disobedient to him at times. One may ask, is it worth serving God? My answer to you today is, yes, it is so worth it. It's worth it because God delights in saving those who serve him. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 29 says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us serve God today, for he made us, he loves us, and he knows what's best for us. Bye. Hi, I am Alex. Why do I serve God? It is because it's the only way to live. The Bible says in Matthew 7 verse 13, that we should enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there. Why would I want to take a path that leads down to destruction if I can take the narrow path that leads directly to heaven? Hi, I'm Kai. Have you ever wondered what it takes to serve God and what qualifications we must have? In 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11, it says that each one of us has been given a gift to serve God. So we shouldn't be sitting on our couches asking ourselves if we are qualified enough to serve God. Moses led thousands of Israelites into the Promised Land, even though he was horrified at speaking in public. In Revelation, it tells us that God stands at the door and knocks, and if anybody hears him knocking, then he'll come in. God calls anyone and everyone to serve him, but we must answer him and say yes. Remember, God does not call the qualified, he qualifies the called. As young people, God is able to work with us because we are moldable and willing to listen to his leading. We are not set in the popular ways of the world. Young people have a full life ahead of them, and they are willing to share the gospel of God with others. The book of Matthew states that we are to go ye therefore and teach all nations. However, Jesus goes on to state that, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of it, world. So we see that we are not only supposed to preach the gospel unto all nations, but that Jesus promises to be with us at all times. He gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we might be able to preach the gospel unto all creatures. Hi, I'm David. A lot of youth tend to ask themselves, can and will I make a difference serving God? Whether it's towards others or yourself, the answer is yes. Serving God allows you to learn how to love. You may no longer have the urge to seek revenge and to hold grudges. God's word inspires us to be more like him. Hello, I'm Oceana, the founder at Here I Am Sunday. Together, my team and I have a mission, and it's found in Matthew chapter 28. Jesus asked his disciples or Christians to tell the world of his soon coming and prepare them with the gospel. Jesus loves us so much, and even the youth, he has called them for a mission. In Jeremiah chapter 1, God specifically tells Jeremiah, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to where I shall send thee, and thou shalt say the words that I have thee to speak. So as youth, we have a mission in this world to help share the good news of Jesus' soon coming. Jesus also said that the fields are ripe, but the workers are few. Will you be a worker to help pick, to help share God's love before the second coming, the wonderful event of Christ's coming? 
I think it's so exciting to see young people who are doing this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll talk about this in a minute. It isn't, uh, anybody that's ever put a video together knows it isn't just one and done. There's usually <laughs> a lot of editing that goes in. But Kai, you said that God qualifies the called. Yes. Tell us how God is changing you through your participation in this ministry. God has really been changing me. As many know, especially Oceana, I am a very quiet and reserved person. So oh, me too. <laughs> doing public speaking and talking to other people about God and stuff is not my thing. But recently, actually, I have been doing my own worships. I get up late in the morning or early in the morning, around like 5.30ish. And I'll have my own worships, and I've really been um, actually doing a lot better with public speaking. But it's like Jeremiah, for me, I could really relate to Jeremiah. Yes. Because when God first called him, he was like, oh God, I can't do that. I'm really bad at public speaking. I don't know what to say, and I'm just a child. Please call on somebody else. And God's like, don't say you're a child. I will put the words that I want you to say in your mouth. and. We really emphasize that in our program, too, because we want youth to know that you don't have to be an adult like you guys to be doing ministry, and it's for the youth, too. And you know what I love is that you don't have to worry about knowing everything there is to know. When you get out there, you're sharing what you do know, what God is impressing you. But none of us know it all. We're all still learning. You're going to, when you believe it or not, should the Lord tarry, when you get as old as I am, you're going to find you're still learning. Uh, I think that's what I love most about the Bible is the depth of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and, just amazing. You know, for me, I always, in the classroom, I was always saying, we're always growing. And as a teacher, you always want to improve. But how has God led you to, to grow maybe in other areas, maybe not just speaking, but are there any areas that maybe you feel like God is stretching your talents a little bit more? Yes. Uh, in, in, it's different than talents. This one area of my life, I loved milk. Like, I love milk so much that I was the only person drinking milk in my family, but I go through more than one gallon of milk per week. And so if I had, <laughs> if I had a sad day, a happy day, any day, you would probably find me on my kitchen floor. And, and since I was the only one drinking milk, I would drink out of the jug on the kitchen floor. <laughs> and so my parents would be like, oh, Shiana, how about your health? This might be like too much milk. Like, I was like, I, they were like, I'm researching and, and milk can cause different side effects, especially for females on, on breast cancer. I was like, it's okay, mom. When I get older, I'll deal with my problems then. I will drink milk today. And she's like, okay, Oceana. And after I had this point in my closet, and I started getting to know God better as my personal friend, my friend that loved me, I was thinking, wow, where does God communicate to me at? And I realized it's through our brain, our frontal lobe. And then in health class, our teacher was saying how what we eat affects our mind. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Does this affect my relationship or how I can communicate to God? Because that was really important to me, and it still is. And so like one day, I said to my mom, Mom, thank you for letting me make my own choices. But today, I'm going to stop drinking milk. And even though it may be with diet, that surrender I gave to God, I think was like Daniel. When Daniel gave everything to God, he gave his diet, what he wore, his whole life to God. God always gives back. He blesses yeah. you. And I think Kai had an experience just like that. It's just like Oceana's parents. My parents started researching about being plant-based and being a little bit more healthy so we can communicate with God a little bit more. And so when my parents first told my siblings and I that we were going to go plant-based, we were all like, what? Our dairy? Our cheese? Ice cream? That too? And we all started freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> and that first... Um, we were all like, nah, that, that's just you guys. We'll stay vegetarian. And as we continued to do a health class at our school, it wasn't until, just like Oceana, our teacher said that it, what we eat affects how we communicate with God and others, then 
that's when I was like, oh, okay, maybe this plant-based stuff isn't so bad <laughs> and I should try it. So I'm not fully 100% because sometimes I have those days where I just want to eat ice cream, but <laughs> we are well, going to get there. And, and sometimes a little bit won't hurt. Yes. It's, it's the pattern of mm, eating yes. too much of it. Yeah. So, you know, you may be listening to these young people and thinking, this is amazing how God is leading, how God just has started this up and you're all over the country. But we want you to hear some of the miracle stories because there is no doubt the way God has mm. been meeting your team's need with equipment and even... Uh, we got to get to the story about how you got here, but tell us some of the things that God has done to help you with the drone, with everything else. God really has, like, with the drone, I was starting to save up for a nice drone for our team. So it could add, like, some dynamic, some different quality to our videos that we were making as a group. And so I was like, okay, I don't want to burden my parents with this drone, so I'm going to start earning money. I was horse sitting, dog sitting, kid sitting, and <laughs> money started building up. But it, drones are sometimes like a nice drones are like thousands or a thousand a dollar. And for adults, that may not be too much, but for this teenager, it was. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I was like, it's okay, uh, little by little. And a miracle that happened was we had this friend and she had sent me a, a birthday present. And I wrote to her, I said, thank you for what you had given me. And I let her know what I'd be using it towards. I said, I'm gonna use this money towards uh, a project that I've been saving up for and thank you for giving it to me. And I didn't ask for anything, but then she, I heard my parents start asking like, oh, Shanna, what drone do you want? And you know, it's sort of like at Christmas when you know your parents are trying to figure out what you mm -hmm. want. I was like, no, it's okay. I, I don't want you to, to do this. I want to be able to save up for this drone. And then they're like, well, it's not us. Someone else has asked to buy this drone for your team or you. And she called me and she said, Oceana, whatever drone you want, whatever you need, whatever the cost, I will pay for it. Wow. And I said, well, maybe maybe you don't know how much drones are and that thank you so much, but they're kind of expensive. She said, I want to do this for you, whichever drone. And so now our team has a drone and this is sort of an encouragement. And another thing was... And a drone allows you to do what? For somebody, I, I can't imagine nowadays that people don't know what drones are, but there may be somebody like, what's the big deal about the team having a drone? <laughs> so... The drone, since it can fly, it's almost like a camera in the air. And it can go over cliffs, but yet it makes a really cool shot sometimes. And to a person who is like me, sometimes videoing myself, you can have a mode that the drone will find you and it will follow you wherever you go from the sky. So, it, And then you can use a lapel mic and connect it to your phone. So it almost looks like someone in the sky is videoing you. So it adds a really cool dynamic to it. You know, please listen to what I'm saying. I am so impressed that you're not just taking the easy way out and just throwing up junk because kids nowadays, the youth of today, as you said, with the social media, you know, people are getting so sophisticated that if you just throw up junk, mm -hmm. People are just going to scroll through and not pay any attention. So I, I appreciate so much that you are using the best of technology. Yes. Yeah. God has also provided um, different things like through different family and friends or people that have heard of our needs. We didn't ask, but they found out. And I believe that was God working in each of the cases like um, lapel mic and also a, a, a special thing to put a camera on while, while videoing. Each of these things, God always heard, even when we didn't ask anybody. And before this ministry um, really got going, I thought, like, wouldn't it be nice to have like a fundraising team, Mom, like where we could, um, some of our team members could get money. And she said, Oceana, I want to tell you something. I used to be in ministry. And she said, you never ever rely on man for your needs. Amen. You always rely on God. She says, you aim high 
and God will give it to you if it is His will. Mm -hmm. And I have done that, and that was one of the best and is one of the best decisions I've ever made because God has never, ever let us down. And he has provided every single need to the smallest thing, to the biggest thing for our team. So when you're saying aim high, you're thinking of George Mueller and with his orphanages when he had no food to feed all of these kids. And he'd just pray and thank God and say, I know you're bringing it. And the, the milk truck would break down in front of the orphanage and show up. <laughs> what you're saying, what she's saying, Kai, is when you all have a need, you're praying. Yes. You're just asking God. Definitely. And he's opening the doors. And it's, it takes a sacrifice first. I mean, it's that faith that you put priorities first and then you pray about it and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? I mean, do you have any other stories like that that solidifies a little more about <laughs> what is happening in your ministry? Yes. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we play instrument instrumental music in the background of our videos. Mm -hmm. So before we were just playing free music that has a watermark. Mm -hmm. So actually somebody offered to- Now let me explain that because I saw one of your first videos. When you have a sample music with a watermark, that means the music's playing along, then all of a sudden it's saying, and this is blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So yes. at first I thought, it's been so long since I've heard something with watermark, I was listening. And then I'd hear, and I think, oh, somebody's directing her from the side. It's distracting. So, yes. but it's free, and and you're trying to get something up. So, what happened? So somebody actually reached out to Oceana, and was like, I will be glad to pay for a whole year subscription. So then you don't have to hear Audio Jungle in the background of our videos. Uh, praise yes. God, that is exciting. Now, how did you get the money to come here? Because this is their first time to 3ABN. And uh, they're, they're familiar with 3ABN. Their families watch 3ABN. We're thankful you're part of the 3ABN family. Mm -hmm. But when you decided that, when we said, hey, come do an interview, because we heard about all the exciting things that God was doing through your ministry, tell us how the money came for this trip. I had been doing schoolwork all day and it was, I was doing a dual class with college and then coming home and doing high school and vice versa. And also my horse, I had just had her bred and so I was, I was working off uh, the payment for her breeding. So with all those three things, I was kind of stressed. Like, and, and I'm sure Kai would understand with schoolwork sometimes, you start feeling stressed and inside all day. And I was thinking of this trip to 3 Vienna. I was really excited to go. I was like, how am I going to do all this while I'm at 3 Vienna? Or And it was just all weighing down on my mind. So I went outside to take a breather. I was sitting on our cement sidewalk. And I said, God, I know you hear me. And I need help. But I know that you will give me peace that passes all understanding if I ask you. So I was just sitting there on the sidewalk and my dad came over to me and see, said, there's a letter for you, Shanna. So he handed it to me and I read the name and it was one of my friends that had moved away and I used to ride past her house on my horse and just say, hi, and, and she had moved away. And I saw the name was from her. And so I opened the letter and out fell a check for $1,000. Wow. And it said, I heard about your trip to go down South. I hope this helps. Praise the Lord. And I jumped up and I probably screamed. I don't remember, but I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Ooh, that reminds me of what used to happen here. Cause you know, as your mother told you about relying on God, that's one mm -hmm. thing Danny okay. Shelton, mm -hmm. when he began this ministry, he said, Lord, I will receive the call and respond to the call if I don't have to beg for money. Mm -hmm. And so he just prayed and God, you know, he'd go forward by faith and have these bills coming in and all of a sudden the money would just show up. So that is so exciting. But now let's talk about, we've talked about how God is doing all these amazing things. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of it because sometimes tell us what it takes to put together these videos. So, <laughs> When you look at the five minute videos or two minutes, it's like, oh, that looks really easy. Like the first time Oceana was explaining it to me, I was like, this should only take me, what, 20 tries? No, I sat, I went out there around 
12 noon. And I was like, okay, I'll be back around one, maybe mom, or sooner. And like four hours later, I had my dog barking, my sister trying to get chase after my dog, and then cars going back and forth. And I was like, okay, maybe I underestimated this. So the process is actually really, it takes about three weeks, I'd say, to get our topics down and then write out our scripts and then we film and produce it. And then we'll have Oceana edit, edit and then upload. Hey, Amen. And you upload to Facebook, yes. YouTube. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Right and, yeah. and you must have wonderful feedback because, I mean, if people are starting to support or see what you're doing, I mean, can you tell us a little more about that feedback? Yes. The feedback has been amazing, especially when it's from young people that we're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the feedback comes in so much honesty and that's what we were looking for. Like one person emailed us and said, I'm really depressed in life right now. I have no hope and I want to know, does Jesus really care? And so things like that and a lot of our feedback comes actually from the Middle East and Asia. Wow. So it's going globally, little by little, but even those little comments and feedback, they encourage us that they're reaching lives for Jesus. Amen. Just like the one sheep, when Jesus went out, he had the 99, but looking for the one. Amen. And so Kai has also gotten some feedback as well on Instagram. Yes, as I mentioned, I started to repost her videos. And at first I was like, God, is this what you want me to do? I mean, like, I don't want my friends thinking I went too crazy and off the rails and something happened to uh. her. But um, I was like, okay, if this is what you want me to do, please at least have one person like say amen or just like it. And so actually, as I continued to post and repost them, I had friends from my old schools say, oh, that was really encouraging or amen or I really like the video, keep going, which is very encouraging. It is very encouraging. And I want to tell you right now how you can and we're going to talk about, because actually some of your members are now going out and you're doing weeks of prayer, they're doing preaching, and you may want to get a hold of these young people because I'm going to tell you something. The, an army of youth rightly trained is going to finish this work. We've got to, if we want to keep our young people in the church, we've got to challenge them and get them involved in ministry because being involved in ministry is how you develop yourself personally. That, that, you know, when you learn that God's plan is full dependence upon Him. That's what it's all about. So we, you can go to their website and it is here I am. Send me 360. That's all around. Here I am. Send me 360.com. And maybe you want to talk with Oceana and say, hey, I know how to do a video. I can do what Kai's doing. I can do what Oceana's doing. I want to learn to really get in and let God feed my soul so that I can share with others. You can email at four, that's the number, for ever Jesus child, forever Jesus child at gmail.com and if your team grew to be a hundred overnight I know God's got you ready mm -hmm. to do it yes. yeah we want to take just a second though because we don't show blooper reels around here <laughs> thank goodness I think we should I think the kids <laughs> like it though I think we should well, for, for, the, for uh, I just thought it was cute they've got a short little blooper reel to show we all get tongue tied. Mm -hmm. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The... Huh? Research shows that children who uh what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? <laughs> I was thinking about the very first time I was on TV, I was 16, and this guy put me in this, we'd done a group interview, he put me in a little room, and he said, when this red light comes on, there's 400,000 people watching you, and I went, hi, I'm Shelly, and I was like a deer in the headlights, and my mother said, couldn't you have at least forgotten your name? 
<laughs> okay. So when you think about the future, what are you guys wanting to do with Here I Am, Send Me? Tell us what's God shown you for the future? For the future, I actually have this dream uh, that I know that with God's help, if it is his plan, it will, it will go through. Right now, as we're doing videos, I also thought it'd be really cool if someday our team started doing radio, but not a radio just to the United States, but to reach out to Ooh. people like in North Korea or in those different countries that as youth, it could be our mission to also go out there through radio. Wow, that is exciting. So in many ways, this ministry is preparing you for future greater ministries. Yes. And we find that exciting. Kai, what would you like to add to that? Well, um, <laughs> well I, I like the fact that it's God is already using youth and we need to do a lot more about reaching Amen. our teenagers. Yes. And I think that's a, a special niche that you've got that even here at 3ABN, I, oh, I'm hoping and praying that we do better in the future. But you've got this niche that you are relatable to everyone around, right. and especially the youth. And I see that really growing in the future. And, and something that I wanted to encourage other youth, especially through this interview I prayed, is that like a broken vase, they have a Japanese art called kintsugi. And kintsugi, they, they mend this broken vase together with epoxy mm -hmm. and layer the cracks with gold. And even if the people out there listening are, are broken and they feel like maybe God can't use them, if, he, if they ask, just like I did, God can put you back together and use that gold that God's given you, forgiveness in your life, to share to other people. Amen, such wisdom. This is uncommon wisdom from above. God is touching these hearts, no doubt. And we're gonna come back in just a moment for our final thought from Oceana and from Kai. And, but right now we're gonna take a news break. You know, we had a few pictures that we forgot to include. Just walk us through these pictures real quick because we wanna see Cyrus. Okay, so the first picture here is of my family, my mother yes. and father, and they have really helped support me. Amen. And the next one? And Cyrus, There's he is my video Cyrus. buddy. He ate a piece of my Bible, so he must be a holy, holy goat now. <laughs> yeah. And here's my studio where I do most of my videos and my animals are my friends and coworkers Amen. there. Amen. And then who is this guy? This is my family. And you've got three brothers and three sisters. That's Correct. beautiful. All right. now. Let's, oh, who is that? That's my dog, Simba. Oh, and you must have a bag of treats for oh, yes. Simba. <laughs> That's what you call concentration. So we want to just give you all each about 30 seconds. Okay. What would you say to some young person that might not know what they can do? How, how would you encourage them to participate? I would definitely encourage them to start praying about it and asking God what his plan is for them. And grandparents, parents, if you know any youth, then really encourage them to start serving God, whether it's joining our team or finding their own little knack that they have to serve God. Amen. Oh, Shanna? My advice to youth out there is God wants to use you. Wherever you are, whoever you are, God is willing to use you if you are willing for Him. So give God your life and He will change it. Many youth make an utter failure of their life, a quote says, because they do not give it to God. They plan for themselves, like God planned for you. Amen, I love it. Now I want to have them uh, put up the lower third of your website again, and it is here I am send me 360.com. That's send me around the world. Here I am send me 360.com or you can uh, email at foreverjesuschild at gmail.com. Ladies, thank you so much 
Not only are we challenging the youth, but we're challenging all the rest of us old fogies to get up off the couch and do something for the Lord. And it doesn't matter how young we are. Amen. God can use you just like them. And you know, sometimes we don't feel qualified. Amen. And our prayer for you though, is that the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you always.